yeah i don't know about the numbers but just the places that we are it it, it grew every time and i think the um it, it's it's also just that you expect so much more and take so much more for granted it's really dangerous actually if you if you if you just grew along with with the project and you don't realize uh the re realize the changes that have been on the way yeah, it was one of the things for example at foster we had this this issue where we discussed i think where do we go for dinner and uh, essentially realized that just to go somewhere with everyone is <laughs> not going going to work in, in brussels and it used to work in the beginning and i said well why don't you keep, we go somewhere and, well at some point you grow to sizes that that you realize that you have to take um well to organize things differently and to to really take care to do uh, things more decentralized because if you centralize things well you, at some point it doesn't scale because you end up with with just the tiny board trying to keep track of everything around it and not being able to because what you really want is that people just feel empowered to do stuff that's them, themselves and the longer the distances are the harder this gets I'm, I'm from hamburg which is like the city that was already the city of star office be before it was open office before it was liberal office so there are a lot of people already there and i i was i, I always had like an information advantage in that way once i joined the project I, i'm late to this compared to others like Ike who's been like there even more from the start so I'm, I'm I'm not even strictly speaking a founder of LibreOffice because I I was still at Sun at that point in time so um, I joined like yeah half a year later um, but since I've been in Hamburg I I've seen quite a bit of, of, of the beginning there and um but th this is exactly the things that we we need to change to uh get more visibility and transparency to people outside and that we are only just people and there's nothing like uh that that we don't want to talk to someone this is really not what it is it's mostly that um i think there's roughly a number of 150 people that you can keep like uh, connections to and remember uh, and keep friendships with and beyond that it's it you, you just keep losing track and it's really hard to just be on the same personal level because we are so successful right now so uh, we grew too fast and we were <laughs> We were just too successful. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, and there were lots of things. You only think about the things that weren't going well because you learned from them. So we learned a lot. <laughs> but but um, yeah, I think like i said one one of the things is really that you have to remember uh, always that mm. there are mistakes and that it's that you're not have that you can't take everything for granted so um so that you have to be willing to to learn and to adapt because things change and the market changed or the project changed and the environment changed and the the people who are interested in the project changes and all, all these uh, things are like moving and you can't stick to just something because it was right, the right thing to do at a certain point in time you always have to reevaluate uh, what is the right thing for the current situation and maybe or even for for the future even if you if you're just working for the current situation you're already behind
again, I, I, like I said, I, I care deeply about the people. So, um, and I think LibreOffice as a project, the, one of the major advantages is not, not so much the technical stuff that we can offer, but the, um, the project and the way it is done and the way what you can do with it as a project and not as a product. So um, it's very much about an experience, like being in this project and uh, feeling that you can do change and then that you can um, yeah, make a change in the pro project and with that outside of the project. But not so much like it's a given thing that is lying there and then we just sticker on a branded icon and that's it it's it's something to be involved in really and 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 i think this is something we constantly have to work on to improve because the this this arc we have to the, this river we have to cross unlike other projects and ideally we want i think we, i would like the project to be like the linux kernel was in the in the beginning in the early days and it got off so easy in quotation marks because it was used exactly by the people who could contribute it was sys administrators seeing oh this is something i can use and then they improved it because they had a problem and it's different for libreoffice because our users are very far apart from from the typical C++ hacker these days. So there's a huge, huge river to cross and we, we need to bridge this. And we're doing this like, we, we started with just developers and was in the, the all early days it was like we had, like Italo was on board from the start doing marketing, but in the beginning it was mostly just like getting something to build and that's it we had no real coordinated qa or something so then we built qa which got us a little bit closer to the users and so on so we need to take these steps to bridge this whole divide and get get really a good connection and look at the whole pipeline and where's the weakest point to get uh, communication flowing like communication flowing in, in one direction and the product essentially in the other one which is in total like I said I don't care too much about the product because the product is just one thing in the whole in the whole project which is this whole pipeline moving things in both directions Essentially, this means that we are a lot closer together. I mean, the I marketing for Linux, but they are not marketing Linux per se. They are marketing like a company doing a distribution yep. and things like that. So um, this, this is very separated because I think in Linux, the, this, this is already like a self-contained thing that, that mostly works for itself. There, there at least there had been and there are quite a few still uh, distributions of Linux that were very small self-contained and had almost no marketing and they just like you don't see much from them but they existed all the time so then it's very different um, for us and maybe you, also this is the other thing um, our developers are not really power users of the product not at all so you often come across the situation where someone says oh I have this bug with this feature and the developer says is working on this area of code and has never really realized this feature exists and what it should do and what is the use case it's for so just because it's such a huge product so just because of the hugeness of the the product we also need non-developers to actually tell developers what is the real use case and what's what's being done with the project um, uh, with the product outside of the hands of a developer who might take his minutes of a meeting and that's about it 
yeah, the, the question there is, do you see it as a product or as a project? And I think the companies that are in our ecosystem, they are free to see this as a product. And they have a clear customer um, or client relationship with, with people there that are paying them for level three support and stuff like that. It's not exactly the same with us uh, as TDF being an NGO. We, we want to make the world a better place, to put it in, in, in the most simple terms. You can read the details in the statues, but, <laughs> but in, in general, um, we are not there to, to serve one specific user. We are, we are there to serve, um, well, to make this thing better as a whole. And this is not about an individual user. And so the question is, what does it help the project as a whole? And again, then it's like, it, it does it get people interested in the project? Do we get more people maybe to contribute if we, and this might very well be a user experience a, a improvement because, I mean, the, for example, one of the easiest ways to get people involved or uh, interested about a project is to like talk about styles and the colors of buttons and stuff. So you might use that actually to, to uh, generate interest and get someone involved in the project and then carry on and see once, once they're in there, um, someone who used to be a simple user and like a customer gets involved and gets more, becomes more than that and sees, okay, this is the problem, but in the discussion realizes, oh, there are conflicting goals and how do we, um, how, how can this be solved in, in a way that serves like all the interested parties? Because in many cases, it's not like there is simply a bug to fix and the work to do, but it's like there are conflicting goals and there are two ways to resolve something. You have to decide which, which one is actually the one, the, the road to take. And well, the default action is actually do as decide. So if, if someone says, I'm, I'm doing this, then you have to have real good reasons to say, but I want this done because it's better. So um, the default is always to go w where there's actually movement and, and solving a solution. But sometimes you, you end up with conflicts that are harder in that um, you have like, well, one, issue, one example is, is, is like zombie bugs that always come back. And um, typical is, for example, layout in, in, in the text application in Writer. And you have uh, a rendering issue where like a table is not rendered on the first page, but on the second or is moved back. And just to make an example, someone complains, oh, I've got this table on the, on the next slide, uh, not like in this other application. And someone fixes that and the table is then as it is in the other application. And then someone else comes along with another document and that used to be fine until this fix was in, which solved it for one document, but it broke it for another. And then you, then you have two cases, and this is not an artificial example, but it's, it's a little bit more complex in reality, but often you have like cases where you can say, say, okay, we can do this document right or that document. And then you have to judge which is more common and which is, is the, um, the more generic case and that's that's one of the reasons why uh, I have uh, high respect for our QA team because they always have to do decisions like that. In the beginning when we started LibreOffice um, we Everyone invested a lot of their free time, and also the companies that's, that that started with LibreOffice uh, invested 
did a lot of front-up investment and had lots of them also had a strategic interest in, in, in the project getting started. And this changed a bit. We are now we are, we are now having companies in the ecosystem, but many of them have very direct goals towards customers and to, to serve problems for them. And in a way, because we're so successful, everyone assumes that LibreOffice will just carry on on its own. And we're having Hackfest events, and where we essentially just go together and get together and solve problems on the product. In the beginning, there were so many problems we had no <laughs> we had no issues like so solving hard and urgent problems right there. And since, uh, well, for example, we have a lot of uh, uh, TDF staff now, the urgent problems are taken care of to a large part by, by employees or contractors of TDF. And we are left with, um, with like the product issues, for example. And it's still important to do these hackfests and to get new people involved and show how to get started on this. But um, the developers, for example, like I said, work for companies that have their, their very own goals and just going there on their free time uh, leads to them maybe being stuck with some something burning down like right now in, in their company. They, they're not being able to like take care of uh, the, the foundation's issue or the project's issue uh, at that point in time. So the idea is to maybe hire these people as consultants and have them exactly for this time frame so that they can spend the whole time really for the project without interruptions from their day business and because this is their day business then and work together with someone from the community who wants to learn about the project and how to be a developer and um, yeah, essentially grow maybe into a, a developer or someone who can contribute in, in a better way um, to LibreOffice. And right now this is very developer-centric, but the idea really is to, to have this in a way that um, you can really see and learn from this. And maybe if you are not a developer, you can also just watch what developers do to understand um, what the actual work is and maybe see, yeah, I mean, this is an opportunity in, in comparison to other products. You never see how, how this is being done and here you can really just go there, be there and see like how is how how the sausage mas machine really works in the, <laughs> in the inside <laughs> and uh, it might make some weird decisions sometimes uh, developers do sometimes make more understandable